Welcome back. In this module, we'll talk about installing the software tools needed to run the MIPS FPGA system. The first tool you're going to need is the FPGA design tool called Vivado. The next set of tools are the programming tools, which consist of Codescape, SDK, Software Development Kit, and OpenOCD. All of these tools are available for both Windows and Linux operating systems, and the MIPS FPGA Getting Started Guide show detailed instructions of how to do both types of installations. So the first set of tools are the FPGA tools. Xilinx's Vivado design suite allows a user to both enter the digital design and then also synthesize it, simulate it, and download it onto a target FPGA board. In this case, we're going to be using the Nexus 4 DDR board. Vivado's design suite, which is called Vivado HL Webpack Edition, is free and it's available for download at this following link. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll follow that link by typing that into our browser up here. And then we can scroll down and look at the different versions. So you'll notice that the current version of Vivado is 2017.3. We're going to install a, an earlier version, 2016.2, because this is what we use in the labs and other uh, resources available for MIPS FPGA. But you're welcome to install the newest version, which by the time you see this may be even a later version. So we'll click on Archive and choose the 2016.2 version. But again, you can install a, a later version if you would like, the newest version, for example. So we click on that and scroll down until we see the options for the installer. So here we see the Windows installer and there's also a Linux version. We're run, running on a PC, so we'll choose the Windows version, click on that, and now it brings us into a login page. So if you don't already have an account, you can click down below where it says create your account. If you do have a login, go ahead and log in or create your account and then log in. After signing in, it will ask you to enter your information, first name, last name, email, etc. After you've entered that information, click Next, and it will begin to download the executable file. Once the executable file has downloaded, open it from wherever you saved it, and wait while the installer is extracted. You may be prompted to ask if, you're, if you want to allow this to make changes to your device. Click Yes. Okay, and now a window pops up that says a newer version exists. Do you want that one? We will choose continue. And then we come to the welcome screen, click next. It will again ask for your user ID and password. This is the same one you uh, created or entered into the xilinx.com page. So we enter our user ID and password and click next. Uh, we leave the download and install now button selected. We agree to all of the license and uh, user agreements. Click Next. And on this page we select the Vivado HL Webpack. That is the free version of Vivado. And click Next. And then we'll want to make sure that we have the Vivado Design Suite selected as well as the Arctic 7. FPGAs selected under the devices. And then we also want to make sure that we install the cable drivers and acquire or manage a license key. Then we click on Next. I would recommend choosing the default, the C drive slash Xilinx. So you may choose to install it for the current user or all users as well. Go ahead and select all users and click Next. You'll be prompted if you want to create this directory, click yes. Finally, the installation summary page shows a summary of all the options we've chosen. You can double check that, make sure the 7 series, especially the Arctic 7 FPGA is selected. That's the FPGA on the Nexus 4 DDR board. And then click install.
after it's begun to install, you'll also see a prompt that says, please disconnect all Xilinx platform cable, USB or evaluation platform JTAG cables. You shouldn't have anything plugged in, so just click OK. And it asks to install these drivers. Click Install. And now the cable drivers are being installed. Click Install again. Now it brings us to the Vivado License Manager window that pops up. And you'll notice that it defaults on Get My Full or Purchase Certificate-Based License. We don't want that one. We want the one right above it that says Get the Free ISC Web Pack. And click on Connect Now. And it will bring us to the Xilinx license page. Again, sign in with your username and password that you created. We'll ask again to fill out the, the fields, likely pre-filled for you. Click Next. So now it gives us these tabs that say Create New Licenses or Manage Licenses. We don't want to create any of these certificate-based licenses. We want to just manage the licenses and scroll down and notice that, in fact, we have this Vivado Design Suite license that's certificate with no charge. Now we can close that window as well as the License Manager window. And we notice the pop-up window that says installation is completed successfully. Click OK and the inst installation dialog is gone. OK, we can test this by opening up Vivado, making sure it works. We see Vivado 2016.2 or whatever version you installed. And we can see Vivado working. In a later module, we'll build a MIPS FPGA project in Vivado, simulate it, and then synthesize that system and download it onto an FPGA using Vivado. So that finishes the installation of the FPGA tools, namely Vivado. And now we're going to install the programming tools. The installation file for these programming tools is available with the MIPS FPGA Getting Started Guide. These programming tools, again, are Codescape, MIPS SDK Essentials, we'll refer to this just as Codescape, basically a group of open source GNU compilers and debuggers that are targeted to the MIPS cores. The other software tool is OpenOCD, the open on-chip debugger that allows us to download new programs onto the MIPS FPGA system and also debug those programs in real time. This functionality requires the Bus Blaster probe, which we'll talk about in a later module as well. So in order to install these tools, we will go to the Getting Started Guide distribution, and we will execute the OpenOCD installer. This will install both of those tools, both Codescape and OpenOCD. So if you haven't already installed the MIPS FPGA materials, I'll show you how to do that now. So we'll go to the website posted here. This is the MIPS Academic Community. And we scroll down and see the teaching and training materials. We notice under MIPS FPGA, we have different versions of these materials, English, Chinese, Japanese, Russian, Spanish. We'll choose the English version of these. And we'll get the MIPS FPGA Getting Started Guide, version 2.0 to start. So we click on that, and it gives us a description of the Getting Started Guide. If you scroll down, we'll notice a place to register or log in to download these. If you haven't already created a login with MIPS, go ahead and register. Otherwise, select login if you've already registered with MIPS. We're going to enter our username and password. And we can now see that the MIPS FPGA Getting Started Guide 2.0 is here, and we can request that download down at the bottom of this page. If we go back to the original MIPS page showing all of the MIPS FPGA packages, we can also download all of the labs. So we click on this, and we scroll down to the bottom as before, and we say, ask us to type in uh, the intended use of the MIPS FPGA labs, for example, developing a course on computer architecture, and click on Request Download. Now at the bottom, if we scroll down again, it says your download request is awaiting your approval. 
Then we will wait for the email from MIPS to see that we've approved, been approved for that download and can then click on the link. After I've received the email acknowledging my request for the MIPS FPGA packages, I can click on the link that says to download the file, click here. I click on that link and see that I can get the getting started guide here. It shows me that it's 85.4 megabytes. I click on download and it begins to download that package for me. After I unzip that file, I have the MIPS FPGA GSG, the getting started guide, and the labs package. I click on the getting started guide under scripts and Codescape, and here is the installer for both OpenOCD and Codescape. Double click on that, and it prompts if I want to allow this app to make changes. Click yes, and I want both OpenOCD and Codescape to be installed. So I leave those both selected and click next. I'd suggest leaving the defaults as the destination folder and click install. It prompts you to ask if you'd like to proceed, click yes. And then it says the OpenOCD is complete and we're about to start the install of Codescape. Click OK. And Codescape begins to install. So here's the, the setup page, we click next. If you want to, you can click on this, open the getting started guide. Click next, we agree to the license agreement, click next, and again, I would recommend using the default install directory because some of the scripts depend on that, on that location. We click next, and then you can choose to either use bare metal or both Linux and bare metal. Click next. So now we're going to click on both the MIPS Classic Legacy CPUs as well as the Aptiv Family CPUs. Click Next, and it's ready to install. Click Next one more time, and Next, and begins configuring the installation. And that completes the installation of all of the tools necessary for using the MIPS FPGA system. We can click Next on this final window and then click OK and it will open this getting started guide for MIPS Codescape. You can read that and then close, close the windows. And that's, that completes all of the installation.